Hey, what's up, everybody? This is LA Night. Uh, I know it's been like four months, I think, since I did a podcast. I'm very sick right now, and uh, because capitalism and societal conditioning. Even though I'm sick and can't do anything, I feel like I should be doing something. So I'm laying on the floor, trying not to barf, trying to trying to breathe. And I thought, you know what? Now would be a great time to do to record a podcast since I haven't done one in five fucking ever. So it is really cold on this floor. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm back with a book review. Sorry, I'm a little late. Uh, <laughs> and by a little, I mean a lot late. I've been trying to focus on my writing and doing other things to try to get the rent paid and then I realized you know as uh, as Stephen King once said well as Stephen King said in one book several thousand times all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy so we are here I'm also going to be speeding this up a little bit because uh I'm taking forever to get to my point, so I'm gonna increase the pace on this soon. It may not be very well edited because uh, I have, I was injured and the injury has made it so that I can't sit at my computer for more than probably an hour every few days without debilitating pain. So, anyway, just FYI. Um, so we're going to be talking about, oh, what's it, what's it called? The Replacement by Brina Yovanoff. Um, this book doesn't have as many good reviews on Goodreads as I personally think that it should. But when I looked at the reviews, I understood why a lot of people apparently don't know how to read context clues. Um, and that's not, you know, like, oh, those people are stupid. That's not what I mean. I'm just saying, if, if you don't, certain books and movies too, if you don't have certain information, you know, like in your brain, when you read or watch the story, then sometimes certain plot points kind of just go over your head. And, you know, that's, that's an actual, like, legitimate style of storytelling. And, you know, sometimes it is okay that the author or person in charge of the movie, um, doesn't spean, spean food you. (laughs) Yeah, I need more oxygen in my brain. That's the problem I'm having right now. Spoon feed you all the information. It's okay to Google things. Oh, if you hear a cat meowing, that's not my cat's. I'm at my parents' house because I'm not well, so I'm being taken care of because my husband is working. And my roommate is also disabled, but she's she's not sick. She's just disabled, so she can't take care of me. Um, but, uh, but she doesn't need to be taken care of. But I need to be taken care of right now, because otherwise I, I can't get up off this floor, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna end up being stuck here, and I'm gonna grow moss and, and end up like Sylvester out and the Magic Pebble, which is a cute children's book, by the way. You should read it. Anyway, so, um, what I mean about the context is that people got a little confused. Some people, not everyone, some people got confused 
when they were reading this book because they didn't understand. Excuse me, they didn't understand the base conceit of the story. And so the world building things didn't click with them. So I'm just going to lay it out flat because this isn't a secret. Like it's, it's not a secret that's like revealed later in the book. This isn't a spoiler. It's just that the author basically expects you to, to figure this out by reading the book without her actually saying the words. The main character, Mackie Doyle, is a changeling. A changeling is a fairy baby that was left behind when a fairy kidnaps a human baby and doesn't want the humans to know that they took the changeling, or took the human baby. They'll leave a changeling baby, a fairy baby, that looks just like the missing human child uh, in its place in the hopes that the parents, you know, don't notice. Used to be in the old days, old, old, old days, um, you know, back when, like, they burned women at the stake and, uh, and people thought that you could get uh, ague by breathing in the air over graveyards. Um, uh, way back in the day, there were quote-unquote methods of making a changeling reveal its nature and then getting its fairy parents to come take it back and give you the baby back. Now, obviously, since changelings aren't a real actual thing, they're actually um, autistic children is, is actually where the, the myth of changelings came from. It's autistic and other uh, neurodivergent and disabled children like kids with um not things that like you would notice right away if when a kid is born so not like down syndrome or something but um any kind of like quote unquote developmental issue that w manifests after birth within the first few years of life um usually children like that were called chain oh my god that's my mom's cat, Mac. He wants attention. The dog is on vacation. And Mac is in love with the dog, and so he misses her. So that's him meowing in the background. Anyway. Um, so anytime you read about changelings, that's actually... In books, obviously, changelings are real because fantasy is a thing. But in real life, when some when they were talking about changeling children, they usually meant like autistic kids and stuff. Um, anyway, so Mackie's a changeling, which means he's a fairy, which means he has all of the issues that that you know classic mythological fairies have. He can't handle iron. He can't ha he can't touch iron. He can't touch steel. Um, being around iron and steel make him sick. He, um, he, uh, which also means he has an issue with human blood, getting blood on him, uh, other people's blood, not his blood, since he's not human. Um, and so, like, without this information, some of the book, like, you know, in the beginning, when you read the book, it's like, okay, there's obviously reasons for these, like, little mysteries and things. So, you know, we'll find out the answers as we go along. But, like, once you get about halfway through the book, it's very obvious that, the, that Brina Yovanov is, has expected you to figure out the plot at this point um, and the conceit. And so when, uh, from about from that point is when it's like, okay, so you know he's a changeling? Got it? Good. Okay, moving on. Let's do the thing. And then, like, you know, they just expect you to keep up. So, like, certain things happen um, to Mackie, and people have complained about them, either to Mackie or around Mackie, and people have complained about them in their reviews because they didn't understand what was happening. Like, at one point, and also, could, there actually was a review that I saw that the person, like, legitimately was just an idiot, um, because they were like, what about this, and what about this, and this is a plot hole, and this is a plot hole, I'm like, just because you're missing basic information about how the world works doesn't mean that that's a plot hole. Case in point, 
this person didn't know that the steel bar steel barbell that people sometimes wear as a tongue piercing is not made out of the same metal as a beer can. Beer cans are made out of aluminum, which is a completely different metal than steel. I just wanted to put that out there. Anyway, so like at one point, if you didn't know that Mackie uh, was a changeling and had an issue with iron, you would wonder why he suddenly went almost into complete killer anaphylactic shock when he kissed a girl who had a tongue piercing. Um, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, so the basic, so that's like setting up the world a little bit. So the basic premise of the, of the replacement is that Mackie, who is a replacement, they don't use the word changeling. They use, they call him a replacement. Um, Mackie has a classmate. Mackie lives in this town called Gentry. And like everyone in Gentry knows that the fairies live in this one area of town like, not in houses, but, like, in this one, like, land spot, the geographic location in the town. Everyone knows. They just don't really talk about it, which also makes Mackie, like, kind of stick out a little bit because they, like, kids get taken and changelings get left behind, but usually the changelings die. And Mackie is, I believe, a senior in high school. And so people are like, what even the fuck? Like, what is this? Um, so he tries to pass himself off as normal, but it's difficult because he's got, like, solid, solid black eyes. His irises and pupils are the same color. Um, he's got white blonde hair. He's sick all the time. He can't, that was, that was the TV. He's sick all the time. He can't, uh, touch, like, the doors at school because they're made out of, they have steel, uh, you know the doors that have the, they're like super heavy and they have like the push bars across the middle and you push on them and to get, you know, into, into classrooms and stuff. Doors like that, um, he can't touch them. He has to cover his hands with a hoodie first. Um, you know, and so he's trying to be normal, but it's not really working. Everyone knows that he is, uh, that he's a changeling. They just don't talk about it. Well, one of his classmates, her little sister goes, so supposedly dies but um everyone knows that what actually happened was her little sister was taken by the fairies and they left a, a changeling and the changeling died and everyone is basically just like giving up the little girl for dead except the classmate the sister of the missing kid so the sister is like all right mackie i know that you're a changeling so you're gonna help me get my sister back and he's like uh no because he's trying to be normal and he doesn't want to draw attention to himself. Apparently the last time they had a changeling in, in their town who lived to be, you know, older than three years old, he ended up being an adult man. Like he grew up to be like 40 or something. And they ended up dragging him out of his house at one point and hanging him in the middle of the street. So, you know, fun things. Um, so Mackie's like, no. So basically what ends up happening is this girl spends like half the book following him around, trying to force him to help her save her sister, which is a perfectly reasonable thing to do. And that's not me being sarcastic. I absolutely have no issues with how she handled the situation at all. Um, her name is Tate, by the way. Um, also a subplot that's going on is that Mackie gets contacted by the queen of the unseely court and she wants to, she wants him to come work for her. Now the thing is, is that the unseely court is the one taking the changelings. Now, mythically speaking, you know, so not in the book, but in mythology itself, the, here's the difference to paraphrase Laurel K. Hamilton Here's the difference between the Seelie and Unseely Fae. Unseely Fae will see somebody wandering lost in a forest, lure them into a bog, watch them drown, laugh about it, and then leave. And then do it again. A Seelie Fae will lure somebody into a bog as a joke, watch them drown, 
cry about it because, oh, I forgot that death is permanent. And then, like, two seconds later, they'll do it again. Because they don't actually care. So, anyway. So, in myth, the Seelie and Unseelie courts are essentially the same in the fact that, you know, how dangerous they are to humans. But, um, I'm starting to feel better laying on this floor. It's wonderful. It's really cold down here, though. Uh, but, uh, in the book, the unseely court is the one that takes the, the children and leaves the changelings. Turns out the, uh, the unseely queen eats kids. I was like, when I found that out, I was like, well, that's new. I mean, because it kind of is. I mean, there are fairies that eat kids. Like, you know, the banquet keeper in Pan's Labyrinth. You may have seen him, uh, seen pictures of him if you haven't seen the movie. He's the creepy thin man with the eyeballs in his, in his palms. Um, played by that guy. What's that guy's name? I forget. It's the same guy who, who plays Billy Butcherson in Hocus Pocus. Um, Doug something. Doug Bradley? I forget. It's the guy who, he's like Abe Sapien and, and, uh, the angel of death in, in Hellboy 2, the Golden Army. And he's Billy Butcherson in Hocus Pocus. And he's also the creepy thin man. And I think the fawn in, uh, in Pan's Labyrinth. So anyway, um, so, like, yeah, there are fairies who eat children. Like, I know that. I'm not an idiot. But the thing is, is that, um, the replacement... Oh, you know what? I forgot to mention this earlier. The replacement is a retelling, sort of, of Tam Lin. Except that in, uh, in the original Tam Lin, what was, what was going on was that... And you know what? I'm gonna actually link in the doobly-doo down below. I'm gonna link overly sarcastic productions uh, video explaining what Tamlin is about, but essentially, Tamlin is about a uh, an elf knight and the oh rainbow. boy, I just got a phone call that was my husband he needed my advice on something, anyway what was it talking about? oh, Tamlin so Tamlin is a human knight who is, like, the favorite of the fairy queen. And so they're, like, it's assumed they're, you know, having some fun playing some bedsheet bingo in the royal chambers, but every seven years, the fae court has to pay tithe to the devil, apparently. Um, you couldn't see me roll my eyes at that. The fae court has to pay tithe to the devil, and so instead of giving up a, a fairy knight, she decides she wants to give up Tamlin. So she's going to sacrifice Tamlin to the devil. And uh, you may semi-recognize this concept from the book Tithe by Holly Black. It's an, that is also a retelling of Tamlin, where in Tithe, Royben is going to get uh, sacrificed. You don't know to who, I don't think. It's been a while since I've read Tithe. I think they just say the dark powers, quote unquote, but he's going to get sacrificed by the queen in order to secure their power. Anyway, so Tamlin is going to get sacrificed by the, by the evil fairy queen and he has to get rescued by the woman he got knocked, he, the human girl he knocked up, Janet, uh, and they like figure out how to, how to do this, how to get it fixed so that uh, Janet can save him and she saves him and then they leave. Well, in, uh, in The Replacement, uh, Mackie is not the sacrifice, but it turns out that the queen's been after him ever since he was a kid. Because apparently his mother, not his real mother, not his, not his fairy mother, but the human woman whose baby he replaced, his mother pissed off the fairy queen, um when she was a little girl. And so when she had a baby, well, she had a daughter and the, and she kept the daughter safe until she was too old to be taken. But then the daughter accidentally took down the protections around the baby, uh, the second baby. 
And so the queen took him, killed him, and left the replacement, expecting the replacement to die. Well, Mackie didn't die because, surprisingly, uh, so it turns out that changelings, the reason that they usually die young in this book is because they live on love. And if they're not loved enough, they will die. And, you know, honestly, it can be really difficult, like almost, or impossible to love a kid who just suddenly appeared out of nowhere when that child's presence means that the child that you gave birth to or adopted or whatever and has have been raising is now dead. Like, that's really difficult to, to do. So the fact that Mackie's mom did it, like, I think she's one of the most amazing moms in, in YA fiction, in my opinion. Um, but it wasn't just her. It was, you know, it was all of them, the dad, the mom, and the sister. It was mostly the sister, but the parents loved him, too. So he managed to survive, but because he managed to survive, that lets the queen know that the, that the mom cares about him, which means that her revenge apparently didn't work or whatever. And so she wants, she's been after Mackie for like a long time and he just didn't know. So she actually kidnapped the little girl that she kidnapped to get Mackie in, to become involved. So then he would do exactly what he does. Because they're gonna, what's gonna happen is the evil queen's gonna sacrifice this little girl, and uh, which all the adults know about this, but they can't do anything, and like people do leave, I guess, the the town, but for the most part they don't because they they sort of imply that it's sort of like in the book Uprooted by Naomi Novik, the magic in the in the land is holding them there, um, so it might be that. You know, they don't really ever give you a definitive reason other than just, like, people just don't leave most of the time. But, uh, and they can't fight the Fae. So, you know, that's a thing. But, so then, um, so then Mackie, you know, after they figure out what's going on with this kid and that she's going to be sacrificed by the queen, um, he volunteers to take her place and the queen tries to kill him and eat him that's what she's been doing she's been killing and eating kids um she tries to kill him and eat him but it doesn't work because mackie magic because i mean there's like a lot of myth tied into why it doesn't work like they explain it in the book that like you know there's this myth and this myth and so mackie basically like weaponizes these myths because in the book the power of belief is incredibly powerful um, a lot of the weaknesses that the Fae have in the book, the reason they have them is because the Fae in, the myth- in mythology are said to have these weaknesses and the people in the town believe it. And so, like, the only reason Mackie is, aller- is deathly allergic to iron is because everyone thinks he should be, basically, which I think is really interesting. Um, so anyway, so it doesn't work, you know, Mackie magic saves the kid, saves the day. He gets with the sister of the of the little girl. Um, you know, takes out the evil unseely queen, blah 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 blah. Um because I'm sick, I'm not really like as energetic as I'd like to be, but I really like this book actually. It's written really well. So like if you're a fan of the Tim Burton, the classic Tim Burton feel, not necessarily the aesthetic, but the feel of the, of the movie, of the, of the, of his movies, where, like, the grotesque characters are actually, like, lovable and have lives, you know, like, Nightmare Before Christmas and Beetlejuice and Edward Scissorhands, things like that. If you like those movies and you have the information that Matt Keyes changed, like, You'll probably like this book. The cover is super pretty, too. The black and white with just a little, little bit of red in it is, is super pretty. Um, the writing is fantastic. A lot of people complained about the writing because in some places it is incredibly, incredibly, incredibly uh, flat. And I don't mean flat like it's done badly. I mean flat as in like if if Mackie were narrating his voice would be flat 
as he's saying these things. And but the thing is, is that it works because um, Mackie has uh, chronic iron fatigue. They don't call it that, but that's basically what it is. Um, like if fairies were a real thing in real life and doctors treated them, that's what they would probably call it is chronic iron fatigue. He's surrounded by iron all the time. He's in pain all the time. He's sick all the time. He's exhausted all the time. Now, when, ouch, ouch, ouch. When I read the book the very first time, which was, I believe, the year it came out or the year after, I was not sick at that point. I, I had never been sick for an extended, you know, an extensive period of time. So I didn't notice these little things, but then when I reread the book after I got sick, I realized that when the, the writing is, when it is super short and clipped and, uh, and flat, it's because Mackie is just exhausted and has no energy. When he's feeling better, and the few rare times when he's feeling good, the narrative structure, like the sentence structure, the way the, the way the sentences are put together reflects that he is feeling better. When he's exhausted, those sentences are very flat and short and clipped. And, you know, like, he's like, I took my shirt off. I laid down. I set my alarm. I closed my eyes. Because that's what it feels like when, when you're sick all the time. Like, the disability rep in this, some people don't like it because Mackie is a fairy. He's not a human. And so they're like, well, it doesn't count. And I'm like, eh. I don't know, it's pretty accurate. And so, but it is, it's super accurate. Like, that is really how it feels. Like, right now, um, for me, moving at all, just, the I'm, like, I'm laying on the floor, and it hurts to lay down here because this, it's a floor. Like, it's hard, right? I'm not laying on a cushion. I'm not laying on an air mattress. I'm laying on the floor. But the thought of moving just makes me want to cry because I'm so tired and I don't feel good and my head hurts and moving at all takes just so much effort. And like, and that's why I keep saying I'm a lot also too. And I know I say I'm a lot normally, but I feel like I'm saying it more now. It's because I have to stop and think about what I want to say constantly because my brain is not working right. Now part of that is because of what's actually wrong with me which is that I'm severely anemic and so my brain is not getting enough oxygen uh, right now because I'm having essentially a flare up. I tried to do something that required a lot of physical exertion because you know I have people have shit they have to do you know chores and things doing the dishes or whatnot, and so I tried to get some, some things done, and I ended up knocking myself half unconscious, but, uh, you know, so it, it really does feel like that, like, there are times when I literally am, like, trying to get something, like, I'll be trying to get something done, I'll start to feel dizzy, and I'm like, okay, this is a warning, I need to sit down, so then I'll sit down, I'll rest for like 10 minutes. I'll start to feel better. I'm like, okay, I can do the thing. I'll stand up and then like within not even two seconds, my, my, all the symptoms come back and they're worse. And I'm just like, nope. And I have to sit down. And sometimes I have to lay down. A lot of times I have to lay down. And when that happens, when it gets to that, you know, when that specific thing happens, I'm always so tired and so dizzy and nauseous and sick that like my thoughts are like short staccato statements and it's super hard to think it's super hard to move you know whatever and Brina Yovanov I think she may be like chronically ill or something because she ca she represents it super well um like down to the way she forms the sentences and writes the scenes where, you know, Mackie's having flare-ups 
It reads really, hi Dora. Dora, you want scratches? Oh, my mom's cat's looking at me like, what in the fuck are you doing on the floor? And that's actually one of the things that, uh, that I really, really like about the book. And a lot of people really didn't like it because they're like, what in the fuck is happening with this, with this narration? Why is it so, you know, simple? And I'm like, it's because his brain is fried and he wants to die. That's why. <laughs> That's what's up with it. Um, and then when he's feeling really well, you know, which doesn't happen super often, but when it does, um, or when he, you know, even when he's not feeling like he wants to die, basically, the writing is very lush. And the better he feels, like, the more lyrical and lush the prose. And it's not purple prose. But it's just, it's very interesting, and I really like it. So, I know I haven't been able to, oh, my hands are dry, I'm going to have to put lotion on. Um, I know I haven't been able to, like, muster up the same level of energy as what I normally do when I talk about books. But I also feel like I've been stabbed in the face, so um, I don't want to, you know, do anything to, like, exacerbate the way I feel and then possibly barf on my phone. That would be terrible. So yeah, um, The Replacement, it's really good. It's a really good fantasy. It looks like it would be a horror novel, but it isn't. It's a fantasy novel. Um, I really like it. Brina Yovanov has, I want to say, six books out? Um, oh my god, Dora! Oh my god. She just did something she's not supposed to, but then she stopped doing it before I could do anything other than yell her name. Ugh, cats. Anyway, um, I think she's got like six books out. She's got the replacement. Um, she's got this book called The Space Between, which is about the daughter of the devil, and I'm not reading that one. Um, she's got one about ghosts and murder called called Paper Valentines. She's got one about witches called Fiendish, and then I she's got another one, and I don't know what it's called, and I don't know what it's about. And she may have written a book since then, because that book was like three years ago. Um, I'm still struggling to get through Fiendish, but not because there's anything wrong with it. There's a personal history that makes it difficult for me to read. And I read Paper Valentines, and I might uh, review it for Halloween, because that one is kind of, a, kind of a scary story. It's about ghosts and serial killers. Anyway, um... Yeah, I managed to record a podcast. Yay, me! Yay! Everyone throw your hands up in the air. Wave them around like you just really care. Anyway, because I've never understood people who throw their hands up in the air like they don't care. Like, why would you exert that kind of effort if you don't care? Anyway. Press the like button if you love me. Subscribe for more of me. Ouch. And, uh... Feel free to leave a comment if you've read this series or, or series, this book, or if you have any questions, suggestions for my next reading, reading, review, podcast thingy, um, suggestions for my anemia, don't say iron supplements, I can't take them, unfortunately, or else my, my life would be so much easier if I could, but I cannot. Um, and, uh. Shout out to my patrons. I can't actually list you guys off because I left the list at my house. But, um, except for Lorian. I know Lorian, but that's because I know Lorian in real life. Uh, but I really do appreciate you guys and all the support that you give me. So, um, and I promise I'm working on all the stuff that you want me to be working on. So, thank you guys for being so cool. Remember, you are loved, and you deserve to be happy. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye!